So which is it? Which is more important, food or exercise? Hi, I'm Martin Sharp. I'm uh, joined by Dominic Furness, and we're here to talk to you on the Sharp Fit for Life podcast, episode number four. That's on fast flying by. <laughs> About which is more important, food or exercise? And the, the other thing is, it's it's crazy because this is one of those kind of questions I get asked all the time, uh, even by people that are actually already accredited like personal trainers or actually been training for years uh, around you know, whether they think food or exercise is going to be the key thing uh, for progressing themselves forwards. So what's your kind of thoughts? Well, I think about people is important, but you might have a different opinion on that. But yeah. I feel like healthy body, healthy mind, and you can do exercise, I don't know. Well, I eat healthy anyway, really, don't I? So I exercise a lot. <laughs> you know what the other side of that platform is, but yeah, no, I don't yeah. feel like they're both important. If I don't eat right, I can't exercise right, and if I don't exercise right, but we feel like eating the right stuff, so I like they go hand in hand pretty, pretty well. Yeah, absolutely spot on because you, you, you've literally got those two, two parts of, of how your body works. Because if you don't feed your body the right kind of nutrition and things, then it doesn't have the energy that you need to be able to do any kind of exercise or, or actually enjoy life and things. The, the um, whole world is energy. Everything's energy. <laughs> yeah, well, there is that, there is that the whole case around it. But let's uh, let's bring it back to some actual base facts around actually, you know, food oh, as, food as energy. Uh, but then the other side of what you've got is obviously if you put it into your, your body, that kind of goes into your digestive system. So you've got the whole chemical process that kind of breaks down the, the food into its, its base building blocks. So you, we talked about protein chains before, and carbohydrates and fats, etc. And it's, it's those kind of building blocks that not only do you get for energy, but also you utilizes those for actually repairing the body and maintenance of your body and actually kind of building your body as well. So if you, if you don't have those right building blocks in place, then, then the reality is it's, it's you're not going to have something there for you to be able to do anything with no, that, that is true so that kind of gives you the whole argument to say okay food's really important but then the, the flip side of that is actually without the right stimulus for your body then the reality is that it just starts to to wither and die over a period of time um and you can see that through a, a whole number of different things that kind of happens to us i mean with the who for example they publish a number of uh, articles around non-communicable diseases which is things where you know it can be either controlled managed or even reversed or prevented uh through the use of like good exercise and being able to you know use your body in the right kind of way um so there's those type of bits. And there's also uh, things like ageing, etc. is one of those things where, you know, people believe that actually it's just inevitable. But but we know from your granddad, your granddad's absolutely it's like a Superman, really, isn't he? Yeah. yeah he still bounces up, bounces up mountains like some kind of mad gazelle. Um, well, people do start say you die when you get old, you've got nothing to do anymore. Yeah. Like your brain just like, well. Yeah. And there's the other so exercise, and I'll maybe prevent that if you, hopefully. I don't know. I'm going to try that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it does. I mean, you've got this whole thing around uh, sarcopenia, haven't you? Which is the uh, your your muscles that things kind of degrade over time, which is an inevitable part of aging. But that's the the other side. Of that is uh, the old saying: if uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you've spent oh, your life God. actually keeping yourself healthy and active and fit, then the reality is you're going to have more of a chance of continuing to use that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I remember a lot of different stories I've had when talking to people when they said actually when they move from a house to a bungalow and all of a sudden they don't have to use stairs, and suddenly when they start to use stairs again, it's a big deal for them. It's kind of a it's almost like wow. a challenge. Whereas actually, if you kind of got your stairs all the time, you kind of use them all the time, you just don't even think about it. You just kind of go upstairs, don't you? On the flip side, there's a lot of deaths on stairs. <laughs> that is a really high mortality rate. It's yeah, yeah. Really weird. Right? So, so what, what, what's the percentage rate? Is it, is it more likely on stairs or more likely skydiving? You know, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I Maybe. think it's weirdly high. So maybe that's one for the comments, guys. If you guys know if the uh, mortality rate is higher skydiving than it is on the stairs, then let us know. Otherwise, uh, yeah, well, might be something we we'll have to Google later if someone's well, really Another thing for the comments, it was telling me the other day that a blueberry is a carbohydrate. Might as well know what you think of that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just can't see it being one, but apparently it is. It's got sugars in, yes. Yeah, definitely carbohydrate. 
don't know how it can be a carb. I don't get it. How can it not be a carb? No, well, no one's well, like, oh, I need to eat carb that's not eat blueberries, volleyball, all, we should eat blueberries. Is that what I mean? Really? Well, surely. Yeah. Well, like, you don't want chips anymore. Surely a blueberry is better than a chip. Well, you see, it's all Unless depends. You, well, it depends what energy you want out of it. Well, and it all depends what your goals are and things, isn't it? And what, where you're trying to go with it. It's it just taking that one sentence in in its isolation, saying you're going to cut out chips and not blueberries. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, you've got kind of two different types of carb sources. They're kind of releasing energy at different kind of rates. The, there's also other kind of factors that you've got in there. Um, so actually, just like taking that in its own thing, without actually saying, well, what's the goal of what someone's trying to do? Is the, is the goal going to be weight loss? Is the goal going to be around, uh, um, I don't know, being able to look more muscular? Is their goal around uh, being able to be more energetic, have higher endurance? Is their goal going to be around just healthy living? It, I, it's really hard just to say in isolation, okay, I'm going <laughs> to take... my, my goal right now is just to find out if a blue is a carb or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's quite. Yeah, <laughs> well, can... the one person watching and anyone commenting, please come on board. Do you think it is a carb or not? <laughs> oh, it definitely is a carb. The USDA, etc., definitely has it registered as a carb. Anyway, we get a bit off track. Again, but... I don't know. I mean, it's, it's all relevant. This is the kind of thing. The, it's really stumped me guys for a week. This fucking blueberry thing. I'm going to teach you how to do it at some point. Definitely. So, so when it comes down to the question at hand, where we're talking about whether food's more important or exercise is more important, I, I think the reality is they both kind of work hand in hand. I mean, there's so many other factors when it comes down to trying to achieve your health, fitness, and lifestyle goals. Right, but we're taking on that one, which one's better? The both. No, no, but say like you're torn limb from limb and you can do exercise, but could you help it? Well, yeah, I mean, eating health is a, is a no-brainer, isn't it? But what we're talking here is about actually, you know, if you want to be developing yourself and you want to improve your fitness, you want to improve uh, how your physique looks, you want to improve your endurance, you want to improve your strength, it, it, the question of saying is one more important than the other is, 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 is the wrong question to ask. But yet it's still the question that so many people ask. And yet there's, and, and the other side of it is there's so many people that are absolutely fantastic when they say, okay, I've, I've gone to the gym every single day, or I've gone to the gym like four times a week, I've done my workouts, etc. And yet I'm still uh, increasing my weight on the scales. And you turn around and say, well, how actually, what's your nutrition like? And they quickly shy away. So people are really good at being able to um, like, implement exercises. You know, like Nick's protein, but high fat and sugar, probably. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Or, or it could be actually the just just the quantity of what they're having is too much. They're actually eating the right kind of things. You know, if, if you eat four thousand calories worth of blueberries, no matter how healthy a blueberry actually is, it's still four thousand freaking calories, isn't it? <laughs> it makes no difference. You've still got far too much that your body won't be able to use it. Let alone the fact that you know blueberry on its own doesn't contain all the building blocks that your body needs. So you know, you're not going to be able to have the proteins, for example, to be able to rebuild muscles or uh, or get over a cold or whatever else it is that you're going to be using it for. Um, but you'll have that energy you need for that one minute <laughs> instantaneously. So what? So this is an interesting one. Then you know, if you're a vegetarian, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or pescatarian, I don't know, the one that doesn't eat fish, right? <laughs> how, which, whichever one that is. Okay. Uh, how do you get, because obviously, they like, protein and that can get from beans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, protein's all right, all the vitamins are all right, but things like omega-3 that you can only get from a fish, mm -hmm. how are you getting that? Well, you can get it from um, vegetable-based sources. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're looking here at vegans, aren't we, rather than being uh, vegetarian, so... Is that yeah. one that can't eat fish? Which one can't eat fish? Uh, well, vegans is kind of more strict, isn't it? That's the veganism means you only eat vegetable sources. Right, okay. So, yeah. so how do you get things like omega-3 or... So you can get that from things like flaxseed oil, for example. So that's one way of being able to do it. And that's also a good way, f for example, with people that just don't like fish. Uh, as a quick and easy way of being able to get enough. But again, if, you, if you're going to supplement with things like flaxseed oil, you just got to be really careful about you know making sure that uh, you do get the oil rather than the tablets. Otherwise, you're going to be sort of eating like 100 at a time just to be able to make any kind of impact. Um, because your body does have a, a threshold by which actually a lot of it just gets wasted through the digestion process. Uh, so you kind of have to break through that to be able to then utilize those fatty acids. Um, and then you kind of got the uh, the other side of it, uh, whether people like, like taste of it or not. And, you, and things like, for example, flaxseed, you wouldn't want to cook with it. So it has a very low tolerance of actually becoming uh, quite bad for you. Uh, and same with, for example, you, you need to consume it within a certain amount of time, otherwise it goes rancid and, and therefore it has a ill effect on you as well yeah that's true so there's lots of so, so it's possible but it's harder basically yeah but you, but you can get the right stuff 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think with uh, it all, again, it all comes down to what your goals are. If your goal is down like general fitness, et cetera, then yeah, absolutely. You'll be able to combine things like tofu and beans and soy, et cetera, to get your, your protein sources. You've got a whole raft of things that you can use for carbohydrates. I think what I'm trying to say like, is, I don't know why I didn't say it in the first place, but like people when they want to get fit or healthy or whatever, just for some reason, a lot of people just think, oh, we'll go like vegetarian or vegan. That is the thing mm -hmm. that pe people think like that's going to help cutting out meat. I personally disagree because I think like meat's not even. If you eat red meat anyway, that's not even that bad, mm. really. It's not a bit fatty and stuff. But is it a bad thing to do to just swap to vegan to try? No, you it's know, just... like be healthier. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Like, is it pointless or is there a point in doing it? Because people do think that that is better. It's all down to what you are eating as opposed to being, and, and the quantities as opposed to being whether, you know, you're going to be more healthy with a, a, a omnivore based diet versus a vegan based diet or a pescatarian based diet versus a vegan based diet. They, they are both have their merits but if you over consume in either of them you're gonna have a problem if you don't balance them out so that you don't have the right kind of nutrition on both of them you still don't have a problem so it really is a case of saying one's better than the other one of the key things you find uh, and the reason why things such as being uh, vegan could help is it's all around restriction because one of the things that tends to happen is people just tend to overeat or overindulge or don't kind of notice what they're eating. Where actually when they start to bring their attention, their focus to the food, etc., such as, for example, making a decision to become vegan, then straight away they are more conscious about, you know, what is it that they're eating? Where is the source of it from? How is it going to be affecting the body? And especially if they're going to be utilising that in any kind of uh, exercise or sports related thing, because straight away they need to understand the balances of things so they know that they're getting the right kind of energy sources at the right time for what they're, they're going to be doing oh, okay so it's uh it's not a, it, it certainly isn't a simple thing it's not a thing where you can turn around and say it's one or the other or anything but you know most most diet kind of things do work because they just work on that simple pr principle of restriction you know and, and, and all of a sudden you're counting things and just becoming a lot more observant the key thing the absolute key thing though is being consistent with it and actually giving it the best shot you possibly can because if you're consistent with it you're giving it the best try uh, and you're maintaining that and you understand what you're doing then you will more likely get something that succeeds for you definitely consistency is key like in my physio i didn't do it before and i do it every two days and it's good so, uh, <laughs> i can back that one up we'll get you back on that balance being eventually <laughs> yeah, one day. Yeah. but but yeah so so equal balance of food and exercise. Yeah, you can't have one without the other, really. Yeah. So what you're saying it should be consistent, but what if you think of a scenario here? Yeah. Say you're consistent, but then one day you do something a bit out of the ordinary, like climb a mountain or something. You know, you decide, oh, we'll go to Ben Nevis today or something like that. <laughs> Can you eat more that day because you've used more energy reserve? Mm -hmm. Or should you still stick to the diet that you had before? Okay, um, <laughs> the crazy thing is we have done that before uh, on several occasions where we just turn up somewhere and think, oh yeah, it'd be quite nice to do Snowden or something. Um, so yeah, it's probably quite normal, but most people I think would, would plan something like that ahead and just make sure they do have uh, enough energy reserves. I think the so, thing you can, so you can change the diet for that day yeah, because you're using more energy yeah, on purpose? Yeah, you or should you eat the same stuff and just be a little bit hungry? It, again, it all depends on what your goals are and, and, for example, how much excess air energy you're carrying with you. So, for example, at the moment, I'm, what, about 25, 26% body fat. So for me to go and do something like a um, walk-up snow or something, um, you know, I, I wouldn't change my diet for the day. I would just continue on with, um, taking in the nutrition that I'm currently having because I know that it's enough to be able to sustain my body. Uh, and, and I just, you know, it, it, my body would just be able to handle that. Um if, for example, I was going to have a, like a two-week trek through the Alps or something, and actually my, my body fat percentage was down, I don't know, maybe down to about 18% or something, then I might be considering actually changing my diet beforehand to make sure I can get some fat reserves to make sure that I, I can actually go for it. Um, and you see this a lot with other kind of disciplines as well, so like cyclists and marathon runners, etc. I mean, you've, the, the, the old kind of uh, wives' tales of marathon runners eating like bowls and bowls of pasta the day before, etc. And again, it's all about having that uh, energy store ready for slow release, release yeah pasta and porridge and stuff like that yeah, yeah. slow energy release yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's, it's got a low high glycemic index so also if you want to have a healthy gut eat yogurt that's a little <laughs> fact 
<laughs> Sounds like you've been reading a few books. No, no, it's nearly sort of like porridge and yogurt. Because porridge is slow release energy, and then yogurt eats the bacteria at the back of your gut that okay. normal food can't really get to. Cool. So there we are. Oh, fact of the day. Gut specialist. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't want to be that. I'd be disgusting. I don't know. There's lots of people out there that do it, and you know, it's it's, it's fascinating, really, as an area. It's certainly not an area of expertise I have, yeah, but it's really it's long. Honest. How are they a mile long? Two miles? It's something silly like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, how long is the goat? You must know. This. I don't know. It's like a mile or something. That's it is. It's ridiculous. Now. It is just weirdly long. But anyway, yeah, if you know how long the goat is, stick it in the comments below. Let's let's hear from you. It'd be great to actually have this as a fact that we can refer back to. It's not one of those that I specifically know off the top of my head, uh, but I'm sure I'll go and Google it if we need to. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Well, I think uh, we've probably done that one to death. Um, well, hopefully not to death, <laughs> to but death. certainly. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's a poor choice of words, isn't it, really? That's a, that's a funny choice of words. <laughs> right. Well, in the meantime, um, as always, please feel free to comment, feedback, drop your questions in. We're quite happy to answer them and hear from you. And remember to like, subscribe, share, etc., as you would do normally. And if you want to listen in the future and you're not on Facebook Live or whatever, we are on uh, what are we on now? Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. Yeah, Google Podcasts. Google Podcasts. No, yeah, Overcast. Hi, guys, if you're a Google Stitcher. Podcaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. List them all then, because I, I don't know. To play uh, that's all the ones I can remember. Oh, well, well, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, yeah, so if you're not around on a screen or whatever, you can listen to us on there. Any time. All right, take care, guys, and we'll speak to you later. Bye Thanks. for now.